Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike here at MH Tutorials. Well guys, today we're not going to do a modeling tutorial. Today we're going to talk about specularity and specular maps. Okay, this is a question that I get quite a lot and this is also a uh, subscriber request. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, now to illustrate this, I created two um, rectangular cubes, if you will. And uh, we're going to treat these as if they were tabletops. Okay, so I'm quickly going to apply a, um, a texture on each. Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to assign a blend material to them. So I'm going to select number one, right click, assign new material. We'll take a blend. Okay, and I'll rename that blend standard. Okay, and we're not going to change that. We're just going to leave that as is. We're going to take the second one, assign new material, again blend. This time we'll call it um, spec blend, meaning that I will change the specularity settings on that blend material. Okay, and then in the third one, right click assign new material, again blend. I'll call this spec map blend. All right. Now, before we get into that, what is specularity anyway? Specularity is, um, by lack of a better explanation, uh, how light reflects off a surface. So to illustrate that, if you shine a flashlight on a porcelain object, the light uh, specularity of that object would be different than when you did the same on a pair of jeans, for example. Okay. Now, when you're applying blend materials, you have the option to change specularity. That's why we're not using a Lambert. You have to use a blend. Okay. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to right click, go to face, select that top face, right click, assign new material. Uh, nope. I'm not. Sorry. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a texture to that face. So we'll just uh, take that face. We'll go to the standard blend. And for the color, I'll uh, hit that. Select file, folder, and wood. There we go. Just going to hit this guy so we can see what it's looking like. And we'll select that and go to create UVs planar mapping. Okay. I'll quickly do the same with the other two. I'll pause the video. See you guys in a sec. All right. And there you have it. So we got three boards. We got the same material on all three and we textured it with the same wood texture. Okay. It's very identical. So keep in mind, as far as specularity is concerned, nothing has changed so far. They all have a blend material. They all have the same 2D texture file and nothing has changed. Okay. Now, before we get into the specularity, if we kind of rotate this into the light, you can kind of see how that surface is responding, right? Okay, and that's the whole idea. Okay. Now, the left one is our reference. It's the standard. So we're going to select the second one, okay? And we're going to go into the specular blend material. That's how we renamed it. And if you go down to specular shading, you see that you have a number of settings that you can play with eccentricity and specular roll off mainly. OK, so let's see what happens when we tweak that. When we start to adjust the eccentricity, you can see that the surface of that wood material is responding. OK, and that is how you can adjust how you want the light to react to that surface. All right. Okay. And what you can also do is the specular roll off. Now that is not such a drastic impact, but I'll pull this up a little and you can still see the effect. Okay. So this is what you could uh, call a manual adjustment of specularity. And you would maybe want to do that if you have, um, a surface that you think uh, has too much light reflection going on, you could tweak that. 
Okay, so that is the left one is the standard blend with the standard specularity settings. The middle one is with the adjusted. And the third one we're going to do there is we're going to apply a specular map. Okay. Now, what is a specular map? A specular map is an external 2D file. Okay. And what's it for? Let's say you modeled a character and that character has skin on his or her face, hands, whatever. Okay. If you apply a blend material and you apply a texture to it, the specularity, the light specularity will be exactly the same everywhere, right? That's not realistic at all. If you would look at a human face, you'd see that, you know, light uh, um, responds differently on each area of the skin, okay? So you can do a couple of things. You can apply a standard specular map, and that's what we'll do here. And I'll just explain as we move forward. So I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to search for specular map. I'll just scroll down, see if we find something suitable. Okay. So here we've got this square here. Now this is not very specific. So let's see what else we got. Uh, we'll do this one. Okay. So I'm going to right click save image as and we'll just call this specular and I'll save it on my desktop okay back to Maya so on my number three blend this guy that we renamed to specular map blend we're going to go to our specular shading settings and we are not going to tweak these two settings here we're going to go to the specular color tab and here you have this checkered box and we're going to select that checkered box. We're going to select file, which will give us the option to hit this folder here. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to look for specular, which is our file. And there we go. Okay. Now that has now been applied. Now the trick is to see, yeah, there we go. Okay. So now if I rotate this object, you can see that the light reflection is different based on where you're looking. Okay. So I'll we'll compare this to the first one. So you see these spots everywhere where you got more and less light. Okay. We'll move over here and here it's equal. It's very, very shiny. Okay. Once again, this is with our specular map. And this is without our specular map. And hopefully in the video, you will be able to see the difference. Okay. Now, this is a fairly generic specular map uh, because you don't really have control over where uh, it's going to influence specularity. Another option that you have is once you have modeled and UV'd your object and uh, you have your color map that's based on your UVs, you can open it in, for example, Photoshop, and you can darken areas where you specifically want different light behavior. Okay, so that's all I wanted to tell you guys about specular maps. Hopefully this tutorial was useful. Uh, if you think so, please subscribe, and I would love to see you guys again. Thanks. Bye.